Okay, so thank you Sheffield Sparklers for inviting me here today. Um, this is uh, actually one of the first of these sorts of events that I've had the opportunity to come to. Um, as we saw from the video, um, this is about the journey of right to education. Um, because we actually showed a little bit of the story behind it, it gives you a bit more time to actually go through some of the problems that we faced so that you guys, with your own ideas and your own aspirations to start your own projects, um, you maybe learn from our, my experiences and our team's experiences and uh, develop your own projects from that. So take this as a case study um, of things you can sort of benefit from, um, our mistakes and the things that worked as well. Uh, as we just uh, sort of saw in the video, actually just a little note, um, it feels very strange um, to watch that video because um, you know, if you imagine hurdles, uh, when, you, you know, when you're enterprising, you're, everything feels like hurdles, so you don't really see the whole picture sometimes. And just watching that video, which covers uh, over two and a half, almost three years of work, um, it's very strange to see everything all at once in one three minute video, which um, I'm very thankful for um, Sheffield's partners to help put together. Um, so that's just something just to note, because you can always, when you start projects, you can always um, get disheartened by um, the obstacles that you are faced with, but it's the fact that you can see beyond these hurdles that you can, um, you see what is possible and you allow yourself to um, continue in that direction and not stop going. And let's just, um, let's do this sort of uh, journey. So um, this is Right to Education. This is actually a logo that's from uh, Palestine because um, some of uh, us as volunteers, we went to do some humanitarian work in Palestine with the uh, funded by the British government, and uh, we worked in the University, University of Brisbane, and this is um, an idea that they had, because they had their own problems with education, as you're probably aware. And uh, we came back to Sheffield, and we wanted to share what we experienced there, and uh, we started in a school in Sheffield, and that's really where this journey begins. Uh, we started with an educational workshop, and just a note, as I mentioned, it's not too much the journey that's important, but the lessons we derived from them. Um, just from right to education, which is up there, and getting to this point, um, I had to email the head teacher and ask her if uh, we could actually hold this project uh, in her school. And it's a funny situation because um, I had said in the email that there's a whole team that's working behind uh, in the whole project, and literally there's no team. <laughs> there's no team at all. Um, it was just me and uh, one of my friends uh, who came with me, uh, well, I met in Palestine and came back. Um, there wasn't a team, we weren't ready to, to actually initiate the project and that's just how it starts. You have to, as Justine was saying, you have to really take that leap of faith and uh, sometimes you know, be a bit bold and courageous uh, to start something, to develop your idea. Um, so we did the first uh, educational impact workshop, uh, which was all about um, the, you know, uh, the educational um, prospects and things for students in a different, in developing country actually, in Palestine and um, comparing them with the ones, the opportunities that people have here. And the, the, the girls in this particular secondary girls school in Sheffield um, were completely amazed that they had so many more opportunities than other people do around the world. And that helped inspire them and um, they actually gave us some amazing feedback and so did the head teacher. And they asked us, well, what's next? And in our mind we were thinking, well, there wasn't a next, we were just doing one thing. Um, but then that got, got us thinking, if we could do one thing and we could do it well, then what else is possible? So we um, developed a new project, and it's called the Big Sister Project, and uh, we got funding from Be, In uh, Be Inspired, which is actually a funding application you can still apply for. Um, it's um, by the government, and they're very keen to start with people who, um, you know, they don't have any... The idea is they give you money, you have the idea, make it happen, kind of thing. And uh, they were absolutely brilliant, they coach you through starting up as well. Um, and we uh, designed this big sister project because we had a meeting with the head teacher asking them what the needs of the school were. And she was saying that some of them you know, lack a bit of confidence and we felt that uh, with our vision of empowering young people that we, we could um, get university students to mentor these uh, young people in the school. Um, so that's where the big sister project was sort of born. And it's been running every year uh, since 2013. Um, so, and we've had some amazing stories, as you can see from the, uh, the video just before. Um, but just again, uh, lessons um, learnt. Uh, there was, I remember when we were starting this project, I had a phone call with my mum, and um, she, I told her about the project and what we were doing and all these things were happening, and she was saying, you know, like, 
why and who told you to do this? Um, and that's the really funny thing. Um, that's the thing with, the, so with enterprise. No one really tells you to do something. As Justine was saying, it's something that comes from within and with the video um, before, actually. Uh, we had that big picture of heart and the, the social enterprise. And that's really what it is. It comes from the heart. And uh, one of, another lesson that we can just draw out from this is um, intentions. Actually, I'm going to save this little package of the lesson for the end of the, uh, this, this sort of uh, slideshow. Um, so let's see what happened after the Big Sister project. Um, this was a little library project where we found that the girls in the school didn't have any access to books and um, you know, the, all the books they had were you know, the, within the actual curriculum and they didn't have their own library in the area and so we actually worked with um, a taxi driver who is absolutely amazing at DIY um, and also uh, we, asked, we sent letters to all these different um, book companies in the UK and they started sending us books from all over the place uh, because they love the idea of um, setting up a library for, for these young, uh, young people. And, uh, and we also salvaged, in the, in the sports hall, um, the school is not the best um, you know, well-funded, which is why we work there. And in the sports hall, it's just, I wish I could show you the picture, but it's just full of absolute mess, you know, all sorts of things. Broken wardrobes, furniture, um, things that I don't even know what to call them. Um, so it was just a mess, but we salvaged certain things, we found shelving, we found some like, kind of furniture that we could sort of clean up and, and, and make a library from, and, uh, and we did, and you can find all these sort of pictures and things on our website, uh, which you'll see the link for at the end, or I'll just say the link. Um, so we built the library, and uh, since then we've been running little workshops um, in, in the school just to uh, continue that kind of uh, creativity that comes from um, picking the books that you want to read from rather than being given them, uh, which is part of the reason why we started this. And then we've got the university tours. So we've uh, organised two tours now. There's one that happened last year, about this time, and one that happened yesterday, um, which is uh, we bring some of the school girls from the university to um, around different departments. And that really raised the aspirations because this particular school that we were working in Sheffield it's not a normal school, the community, and there's a lot of cultural barriers um, that inhibit these um, girls from choosing what they want to do. They don't realise the opportunities that they have within them, and uh, our job was to sort of open their mind, not to make, you know, not to sort of uh, control or say what is better for them, but just to make them open-minded to know what uh, options they have. And these university tours are having a fantastic effect on these girls. Um, then there's a little dragons project, which you saw uh, some of the um, outcomes of in, in the video, uh, which is an entrepreneurial challenge for the school. So we give the, the, the <coughs> young people uh, 20 pounds, and they have to come up with ideas of how, what they can products they can make uh, and see what they do with it. But the emphasis throughout the whole project was never money um, at all. It was all about teamwork, uh, how you guys can work together, and that's that's the actual uh, aim of the project. And what happened after this? So we're actually we're stacking through many months and almost years of sort of uh, work. Um, this is a little code breaker where so someone approached us. We had a meeting in that room. Um, someone uh, in the maths department had an idea that they wanted to do a workshop with young people on how to program games and all sorts of things. Um, so we we worked with this person, his name is Desire, and allowed, we, we we invited him to the school and he developed his own project. So right to education is not just about us doing what we want to do, but it's about, about welcoming other people who have ideas and want to benefit and believe what we believe, and um, we can sort of support that um, action. What happened next? Um, again, from the University of Georgia, so actually we were technically here yesterday, um, uh, in, the, in the sort of journey of things. Um, there's the acceleration course, um, which is actually another lesson to draw. Um, <clears throat> uh, Justina had a really good example of how um, she benefited well, allowed, uh, what was that lady's name? Pfizer. Pfizer, yeah, Pfizer. It, you know, initially meeting Pfizer and sort of building up like, her confidence, and then Pfizer actually doing her own thing, and you know, that's amazing. And that's one of the difficulties with social enterprises. We find that the people who are most um, passionate are the ones who lead, but then what happens when they disappear, or they graduate, or they work starts, or they get married, I don't know. Um, what happens then? How, where does that passion go? Can you? Um, get somebody to continue this and one of the ideas that we had to 
um, to face this sort of issue is this acceleration course. Uh, because we have so many projects running simultaneously, we actually found that we could get a volunteer, um, find out what skills they already have and what skills they want to develop, and then um, basically push them into the deep water of different projects. So if they wanted to learn how to do public speaking, uh, we'd make them do an assembly. If they wanted to learn how to do interviews or interpersonal skills, put them in the Big Sister project or do, actually do a video. <coughs> um, and that way they actually develop their skills a lot faster than is normally um, uh, allowed for. And then they can maybe help us in leading a right to education uh, to, new, to new fronts. Okay. Uh, and we've also got an educational impact workshop again, uh, this time with uh, uh, Malika, the SU education officer. Um, she'll be going into the school. And also we've got the Big Sports Day project, which is the, the girls are, like I said, the, um, the Little Dragons project is all about teamwork. This is also about teamwork, but it's also with the touch of event management. Um, the girls in Oaks High School are going to design their own, um, own uh, sports day. And they, they, the school didn't have any um, equipment uh, for actual sports facilities and things. Um, so this project has allowed them to raise their own money to, for their own equipment so they can have their PE lessons as every other kid is expected to do, as you might have done and I did. Um, and these girls can benefit as well. And I'll, I'll skip this one. This is the future of our ideas. Uh, like I said, um, we're sort of leaving um, some of us are graduated and living other, in other places. We are developing a coaching uh, project which works on um, works as a sort of um, get somebody who is aspiring to become let's say, pretend a dentist um, and then uh, finds a dentist who, who is already working and can give them some support in their personal statement because that's what we need sometimes. You know, we just need someone who's like an uh, older brother or an older sister to, to support each other. Um, and that support is so easy for me to give and so valuable to the person who receives it. And all of us have benefited from other people. And it's, 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 it's this idea of giving back um, that uh, this project's all about. Um, so, so far we've had 43 volunteers over two and a half years and we've benefited um, over 90 uh, young people. And it's still counting because our projects keep continuing and new projects are coming. Um, so let's, let's take an overview of what we're looking at here and um, I want to just draw a point which is about here on the sort of journey of things um, and the main point actually there's three points I want to make. The first point is perseverance. Um, at this point uh, when we just sort of started, uh, actually sorry no, it's just this point, we're about to start the Big Sister project. Um, <coughs> there were so many times I wanted to give up, you have no idea. Is, is, is ridiculous how many times I just thought, you know what, forget it. I had I had called meetings and often nobody turned up and I'm sitting there on my own like, in a cafe. Um, and that happened not once but multiple times. <laughs> and I think just in, you guys know, I'm, I'm going to know um, this experience. And uh, at one point I was just thinking, you know, there's no point in continuing, this is not going to work. This is, I had an idea but it's not working. <coughs> Fine, okay. But um, something inside me kind of told me that it's about actually, you know, maybe, maybe this does, might just slightly work and maybe if I'm not the one to bend, like, actually take it forward and continue, it might be somebody else who does it. So I'll just carry on and just, I'm completely blind with what's going to happen, I just carried on and um, with my team, uh, we actually did make it to um, develop a, like a long-term thing. Um, so that's uh, one of the main points I wanted to uh, raise. The other one is organic development. Uh, which is something I'm sort of mentioning in the interview, uh, which is all about uh, people to get this tendency to rush. You know, they get they hear these big numbers like five thousand pounds coming in, and they kind of want to jump ahead and get all that five thousand pounds. But really, you have to think about not just the finances, but your human resources and the actual point of what you want to do. Um, is five more is not better. Um, and I was speaking to someone from the uh, charity commission, and he said that the people always think this more is always better, but no, it's not. It's about quality, uh, not quantity, and um, that's that's why it's easy to you know, to get you know, hyped up about little uh, application forms and things. But just really think about what why are you doing something? Which is actually my last final point, uh, which is about intentions. And, um, and don't jump into finding applications and things if you feel you can't actually deal with that. Um, because one of the things actually I won't go into too much. You can ask me questions about organic development. Go on back for hours. 
Um, uh, but the, the last uh, kind of point I, I mentioned was um, intentions. Now, intentions is something that um, maybe maybe might not associate with something like this that much, but I think it's, it's, it's absolutely crucial. Uh, your intentions from starting, start to finish, and maybe not finish, maybe just carries on, but um, has to, you know, there's something about your intentions, and the intentions is something that allowed this project to develop and to go to the next stage. Um, we had an interview in a room beyond that wall, um, and we were applying for funding. I actually applied for £220 or something. And after the session, um, they actually, USC actually gave us £500. Um, so within a few minutes, things completely changed. And that's because intention is something people can detect on somebody, and it also is the reason why lots of people might want to volunteer with you. Um, because if your intentions are for good, then people recognize that, and then they uh, take that on and they, they'll join uh, forces with you and, and you can continue your project. If your intentions are slightly off, maybe at this point you start, actually where are we, about this point you start thinking about, you know, you're standing in front of a whole bunch of amazing people and you're thinking, oh, look how great I am, and standing here talking to you guys, educating you. No, that's, that's, the, that's the mistake. If you start thinking like that, your whole idea of what the reason why you start, the heart behind your project uh, will fall apart because you have allowed for uh, your intentions to change. Um, and that's very important. And that's the final point. So we had um, perseverance when things are tough, starting out, when things, um, when you start to develop things, you know, think about what you're doing, remember your intentions, and make sure your intentions don't get changed at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you.